All right, we are now into the game, ladies and gentlemen. And this single map is what's going to decide who will move forward. Spawning over here in the bottom left position, guys, on Cloud Kingdom, as the red Protoss player, he hails from the team Western Wolves. He just came off the back of the best tournament finish in his life. What will he do here? We have Starnan. And his opponent spawning in the top right position, representing Team Dignitas, a winner of iSeries tournaments, trying to qualify for the last 16 here. Thanks to the ESET UK Masters, will he be able to do so? We have Bling. Pretty awesome matchup, and thank you to everyone who's watching in chat tonight. This tournament will determine the third and fourth players out of eight who will qualify through to the round of 16 of I-47, the ESET UK Masters Finals. They will receive a travel stipend as well towards their getting there. They will receive prize money and they will receive VIP players tickets to the event. So uh, a decent chunk of cash and good value stuff, including free accommodation on the line here for both of these guys, should they make it through this round and then make it through the final as well. Uh, I believe they are, let me just double do a quick double check. Yes, they are one best of three away from getting into the semis. Uh, let me update you guys, by the way, on the other half of the bracket. MTL's one managed to brush aside AI's reel, uh, which is, wow, that's actually a huge, huge upset there. Really nicely played by him, and then beat Desro to set up a semi-final match against Acro, who is a very, very strong German player. Defeating FXO Slavic 2-0 there, and one of those guys will be getting a ticket to I-47. In the meantime, in this half of the bracket, Starnan Bling poised at 1-1. And we have Johnny Rico and Orc. So three out of four of these players are UK. In the other uh, quarter of the bracket here, the winners of those two matches will meet in the semi-final, and that will also determine one of the players moving forward with that seed at I-47, along with those lovely monetary goodies. So a lot to play for here. We have got two assimilators out for Bling with two probes in each. In the meantime, getting a second one from Starnan had three in the first. So not too much difference in terms of gas uh, because Starnan did, of course, get his a little bit earlier. But Bling is catching up and will be able to pop back very shortly indeed. Just going to be scouting around his base to make sure that proxies are not forthcoming. Starting that warp gate research as well. And uh, if we take a look at the unit composition here, we do have a first Zealot and then a Stalker coming out from Starnan, whereas Bling actually skipped the first Zealot and is going to be going straight for a Stalker and a second Gateway. So possibly going to be going for three Stalkers. Let's find out if he ends up choosing to do that. And yes, there we go. So three Stalker opening coming out from Bling once again, whereas we have a Zealot and two Stalkers coming out from Starnan only off a single Gateway. Otherwise, not too much going on at the moment. Starnan being the more aggressive out in the middle of the map, and that Zealot going to be running straight home as soon as that Stalker spies him. will be able to get a bit of support from his own Stalker as that Zealot now starts taking just a little bit of hull damage, and Starnan going to continue moving out in the middle of the map. Bling actually sneaking a probe out while this is happening as well. Knows that Starnan isn't actually holding the Watchtower as it currently stands. That probe going to be able to go down, but Bling defending very, very well at top his ramp, picks off the first Zealot, and pardon me, by the looks of things, there's actually two Zealots and a Stalker, not a Zealot and two Stalkers coming out from Starnan here, who has gone for a very, very quick Twilight Council and a second and third gateways. So are we going to see DCs again? Or are we just going to see a fast blink? There is a lot of cliff area here to blink up and down. So uh, blink decent on a map like this. And look at this blink having the same idea going for a third gateway and a twilight as well. So uh, both players will end up going effectively for the same thing. But the twilight's already finished for Starnan. He started his blink a little bit earlier. Bling, though, has four extra probes and has just a little bit extra production over his opponent. Uh, Starnan also going to be going for that robotics facility, so it looks like we're going to be seeing some Blink Observer play, or Blobs play, if you will, here on Cloud Kingdom in game number three, whereas Blink has not yet started a robotics facility, so that's an important difference to note here. Starnan on 36 supply, Blink on 41. Uh, there is still a little bit of discrepancy as far as probes are concerned, because 27 to 24 currently in favor of Blink. And Bling now starting his robotics facility as well, so we will be able to get a quicker Observer out for Starnan. But Bling does have more cash to work with as he nearly picks off a Stalker there. 
And he has to be so, so careful. Another forward pylon going down now for a bling. As the robotic facility finishes for Starnan. And he will be able to get an observer out at the earliest possible opportunity. In the meantime, let's take a look at what the army tab is showing us. Bling is currently slightly ahead on 20 army supply to 16. He has got 10 stalkers to 7 stalkers and a sentry at the moment, as well as a slightly higher uh, probe count. And look at this, not actually going for the observer. He's skipping the observer, going straight for Immortal, sensing some sort of a timing coming in from Bling. So the Immortal from Starner will be able to help him defend quite a bit, but he's at 50 out of 50 at the moment, and he really needs to get a pylon down. There we go. Putting an extra pylon up with Blink might be able to blink in and pick it off with an Observer. So Starner may want to put a second pylon down somewhere just to be absolutely sure in case Blink pops in and supply blocks him a little bit further down the line. Pretty tense moment now as Blink trying to move in. His Blink almost finishing here, and the Observer is moving out across the map, so he is ready. For this move, uh, Starnan does have Blink, of course, already complete. And he does have an Immortal out as well. And Blink going to be expanding behind this. He feels that he has a good position on Starnan at the moment. He can just uh, sit here and wait until his expansion is complete and then move home if absolutely necessary. The problem for Starnan is he can't really move down the ramp right now. Because if he does, then Blink can Blink up and the Immortal will be stuck at the bottom of the ramp. That is the big problem, and wow we Very, very nice pick off there. And here we go, Guardian Shield coming in from Starnan. Good blink underneath, but Bling is able to blink away and target the Stalkers one by one, and he is one-shotting those Stalkers for the longest time there. What is the Units Lost tab looking like? Very, very even. Starnan losing marginally more, trying to break out of this contain. Will Bling now move up to the high ground? We'll find out in just a moment. The Observer does see the army here, and Bling looks like he's going for it. He needs to be so, so careful of that Immortal, though. Bling's happy to engage as long as he knows the Immortal isn't there, which is why when Starnan blinked forward, he was able to turn around just for a little bit. And a good pick off of the Observer there. Crucial from Starnan, and Bling can no longer blink up onto the high ground. Starnan going to be taking an expansion of his own right now, but he can't really move out across the map to harass the expansion from Bling that is about to, well, has already completed, actually. He needs to be a little bit careful for that as Bling comes in for round number two. He isn't remaking that Observer, so Starnan's Observer rules over the entire map right now. And a little bit of aggression coming out from Bling, but not too much. Both sides just kind of chilling out as it currently stands. And they're making some Immortals as well. The Pylon is scouted by that probe from Starnan. Going to be sending a single Zealot over there to take that out. And let's take a look at what uh, what the Stalker numbers are like. 11 to 12 in favor of Bling. But two Immortals to one in favor of Starnan at the moment. So it needs to be very, very careful, does Bling. A couple of the Stalkers from Starnan, though, have taken hull damage. And Blings have not. So he really wants to be fighting with those Immortals in the army in case he accidentally gets caught out uh, by Bling. As we do now have another Observer moving into the natural expansion. So uh, Bling possibly looking to do a bit of aggression here. Trying to save that pile. Unable to do so. It does go down to the Zealot before anything happens. And a huge Bling forward coming out of there. Uh, is he able to pick up? Yes, he picks off one Stalker. But Bling blinking away just in time. Will he get a second? No, he doesn't. Okay. So in the meantime, Stardan's Observer is actually inside the base of Bling. The Immortals are lagging behind the rest of this army, and Bling needs to be very careful with how he handles this. He is down one Immortal, 3-2, to two, but he does have the Stalker advantage 11-9. to nine. He's currently 84 supply versus 67, and he's got 41-31 to 31 workers. So Bling needs to prolong this game. He has a decent, uh, a decent economic advantage right now because he just got that Nexus down uh, that much earlier. Meanwhile, Starnan has the Immortal advantage, but it's a little bit too slim for him to do anything definitive. Uh, which is a problem here. Nice pick off there of the Observer once again, so uh, Bling will not be able to uh, get a word in Edgeways as far as that is concerned. And he is now moving out across the map just a little bit. He commands the Watchtower closer to him. He's going to be blinking up with a small group of Stalkers just to see if a third base has been taken. But Bling has his army already there. It needs to be so scared. He's just scouting for forward pylons at the moment. And the armies catch the slightest glimpse of each other. Starnan sees that Bling is following him. Going to be blinking out before anything like that can happen. And both sides are going to be able to continue. We have extended Thermal Lands and Colossi production already out from Bling. So using his economic advantage just to get to Colossi that much earlier. 
Uh, let's see if he can try and translate that into a win later on in the game. He will have a Colossus advantage. Needs to get that second robotics facility before Starnam does it. He wants to completely cement this. He's going for an additional two gateways down here in the back of the base. Will we see another robo? No, we're going for a third gateway as well. So he's going to be able to go up to a grand total of six gateways now off of the two bases. Extended Thermal Lance has been Chrono Boost. Now we have a massive engagement in the middle of the map. Not quite coming off the better bit is Bling at the moment. But he does go down onto the low ground really well, actually, able to zone out those Immortals and only hit the Stalkers of Starnan. That's a pretty cool move. Not exactly a game-ending move, but a very good move from him. And he is currently 20 supply ahead, so all he needs to do is keep trading. And as long as he's not too inefficient, he will get a great advantage going into the end game. Now, I've got another gateway coming up here. Do we have a second Robo coming down? Not yet. Uh, from Starn and three gateways from earlier are now also about to complete for Blink. Uh, got more Colossi out on the way as well. He is currently up to gonna be three Colossi in just a few seconds versus what will be the two from Starnam, which is actually a little bit slower. So it's three versus one just for a split second there. We have the Stalkers now killing off the Destructible Rocks in the middle of the map, trying his best to get some damage done. Starnan coming up, picking off a Stalker with that Colossus, which is great news for him. But Bling moving forward, picking off yet another unit. He's going to try and move forward, taking apart the Destructible Rocks in the middle of the map, which you don't actually often see on Cloud Kingdom here, and seeing if he can't get some pot shots off on an Immortal. Unlikely at this stage, though. Extended Thermal Lance, Starnan is waiting for it to complete. It is already finished for Bling. So he has a bit of an advantage, 133 to 110 supply, and he's now moving up the ramp. And that was the last big bottom to top choke point here. And I wonder if it's going to be enough. A massive engagement coming on. We have some zealots in the back. Excellent force fields though from Blink, zoning them out entirely. And they weren't able to do the damage they wanted. I think that might be that. The three immortals from Starnan are now starting to drop. Uh, is it going to be enough? We have one Immortal gone, the other two still there, but Bling is three Immortals of his own and down a bottom, and it looks like, yes, the Colossi do actually finish up for Bling before they do for Starnan, but so much damage is being done to the natural expansion. Great Bling! Picking apart that Colossus there and forcing it back, and now he's just going to be focusing on the drones at the natural very difficult situation to be in. Blinking up onto the high ground as well, and the Colossus goes down. All that remains are the Immortals trying to fend off some Zealots on the low ground here. And Starnan is down to 46 supply versus the 87 of Bling. Bling is looking in very, very good position here to win this game number three and potentially progress to the semi-finals. Good Blink Micro coming out of there from Bling. A round of Stalkers. A gateway-centric army is exactly what he needs right now. And Starnan moving probes down to the natural, but it is not going to be fun for him because a lot of probes are about to go down still with an immortal in this army he even has the observer on the high ground so he can blink up and take apart the colossus that's exactly what he's going to do the colossus not quite going down but he can blink over there and uh nice force fields but bling's gonna be able to blink up and chase it down that's exactly what he does gg from star now well played and dignitas bling ladies and gentlemen moves on to the centers